you doing? Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com and today I've got something epic for you. We're going to be talking about DIs, we're going to be talking about amps, we're going to be talking about interfaces, mics. I'm going to be walking you through how I record my bass when we're doing sessions and exactly why I, you know, what, why I do what I do and the reasons and the stuff that I use. Now this is part two of a three-part series and the reason why this idea all like, came about was I'm working with a guy called Warren Hewitt, who is a multi-platinum producer, engineer, songwriter, living over in LA. And we're, we're working on a project and he said, hey, you know, do you want to share this with your guys? And I was like, it's a great idea, man. So if you haven't actually checked Warren's site out, because he's got an epic YouTube channel as well, go over to Produce Like a Pro on YouTube. Just tons of great videos and um, all related about you know songwriting arranging and and really his focus is you know how to get great sounds of vocals and what mics he's using preamps and super sexy stuff like that but anyway this is part two in part one i talked you through how to set yourself up when when you get the files from the producer or the songwriter that you're working with, how to set those up in Logic or Pro Tools. Um, I talked about arranging and why you need to map it out. I talked about setting the tempos in your DAW, why you should do that, and a host of other cool stuff. So if you did miss lesson number one in this series, I will link to it, or DMAC behind the camera will link to it somewhere on this screen. Anyway, so, First of all, can I just tell you something about my voice? Now, if you haven't watched any of my videos before, you won't you know, notice any different. But if you have watched any of my, my videos before, you'll notice that my voice is, I think it sounds slightly sexy, but, <laughs> but others will argue that it just sounds weird. Now, it's just, I've got a super like laryngitis or something like that, so I like it though. What do you reckon, DMAC? Sexy or weird? Yeah. DMAC thinks it's sexy. I'm all for the gruff voice. So. Let's look into you know, how I'm doing this and what I'm recording with, okay? So when you're recording into your DAW, your digital audio workstation, you've got a few different choices. I'm gonna be talking about basses in a minute as well because I think um, having an idea of you know, using different basses with different producers is an interesting topic, so that will be in this video as well. But let me just talk about how, how I record my bass to start with and then we'll get onto the bases. So when you're recording your bass, you've got a few different options. It can be super simple or it can be, you know, you can go a little bit more in depth into it. One of the easiest ways to record your bass is just to go direct into your interface. So here I'm using a Focusrite. It's just a two channel thing. And really, if I wanted to keep it super simple, I could just go direct into the interface and then the interface goes into the DAW. And I've recorded tons of stuff like that. I've recorded, you know, I've turned up to many a studio and just went straight in. No sort of like fancy DIs or anything like that. Straight into the interface and straight into whatever you're recording it with. And you can get a great sound like doing that. So don't let all of these wires freak you out and scare you, okay? So really simple. If you want to keep it simple, just go straight into the interface and then straight into your DAW. And you can, you know, and you can get like the focus right stuff is good, PreSonus stuff is good, the Apogee, you know, um, is great. Any am I missing any DMAC? You think of any? They're the three that kind of come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, there's like there's a load of options, so just check it out online. And you don't even have to have, you know, like a, a, a four track or anything like that. Like this has just got two inputs as has the, the, the other ones I talked about as well. Now, the other option, if you've got a decent amp, is that you could just go into your amp, okay, and then direct, if you've got a good DI on your amp, come out of the DI and then into your interface, which then goes into your DAW, okay? So the bass goes into your amp and then out of the DI of your amp, round, and then into the interface, I'm saying round because I'm, you know, I'm here and it's going round, <laughs> out of the back of the amp, into your interface, and then into your DAW. And I'm using a Van Der Klee Aurora amp here, which are 
Uber cool. Massive shout out to Mark Vanderclay. If you haven't checked out Vanderclay Amps, go give him a high five. He's probably he's got a Facebook page and stuff like that. Check out the website. They're super super cool, um, like all handmade. So check them out, Vanderclay Amps, and and that again is a pretty simple way of doing it. So you just go into your amp, out of the DI, and then into your DAW. Now a lot of the time, or it depends what amp you're using, but on this specific amp. I could choose whether to use the EQ in that signal chain, okay? So I could go into my bass, into the amp, and then through into the, inter uh, yeah, into my amp, into the interface, and then into the DAW, and not use the EQ of the amp, or I could use the EQ section of the amp. And not, you know, some amps have like a, a pre or post on the background of the DI, that Aurora has that, and so do a host of other amps as well. So that's sort of like the second easiest way of doing it, okay? Now, another way of doing it is micing your cab, okay? So I'm using a, it's a Shaw 52A, Shaw Beta 52A, which are traditionally used for bass drum mics because um, they've got a great low end response, but you know, they're okay for bass as well. I use them quite a lot as, you know, and there's a host of other stuff as well. Electro Voice do some great ones. There's a host of mics, you could do a search online. Um, I, when, when you're micing your cab, I've got this just off center because I don't want it too bass. I want to add a bit of top end, but I don't want too much top end. So I'm just going a little bit off center, but you can play around with that. And sometimes it depends, you know, about, you know, what, what your cab's like. So I would really recommend that you're experimenting with that all the time. So the signal chain for this is bass into the amp, and then obviously your sound comes out of the, I'm just gonna turn that down. Comes out of the speaker, hits the diaphragm of the mic, and then the mic is obviously going into the interface, into the DAW, okay? So let me just run through those different options. Option one, you could just go bass, into your interface, into your DAW. The second one is bass into your amp, and then out of the back of the amp into the interface and then into your DAW. And then you can mess around with doing pre or post EQ if you want to use the EQ of your amp and get a bit of that flavor in there. And then the next one is you could just use a mic, okay? And all of them, all of these options that I'm telling you have a slightly different sound. And really you've got to look for what you like and also take into consideration what the, you know, if you're doing a remote session, what the producer wants. Does he want just a mic or does he want just a DI or, and I'm gonna get onto what I'm using. So I'm not doing any of those. What I'm doing is, and what I love to do, is use two signals, okay? So I'm mixing them. I'm using a DI signal and I'm using a mic signal as well, okay? So for the DI, I'm using the BAE D DMP here, uh, 1079, I think. Yeah, oh, 1073, BAE DMP, 1073. And I go from the bass direct into that. Now this is a really super, super cool DI, really great sound. I really love it. So I'm going, and that's why, you know, I like it. And the guy I'm working with, Warren, he's a massive fan as well. So it goes bass into the DI, okay, into the DMP, and then out of the DMP into the interface, okay? And then, you know, obviously into your DAW. And then you come out of the, I've got a, through, you come out of the through of the DI and then into the in, the input of your amp, okay? And then you mic up the cab as well. So let me just run you through that again. For the DI, I'm going from the bass into the DI and then out of the, out of the DI into the interface, which is input one on the interface. And then I've got a through on the DI, that through comes out of the DI and into the input of the, in my case, the Van de Clay Aurora, and then I've got the cab mic'd up with the Shaw, okay? And the mic goes to input two of the interface. So this setup just need, the one I'm using today, uses obviously two inputs. And what I'm gonna do is, and I, well, first of all, I'm gonna run you through why I do this, but I also want to, and I'll show you, further on in the video, the different sounds that you get. So what I'm gonna do is I'll run you through the DI only sound, then the mic only sound, and then we'll mix them together, okay? Now the reason why I love this, this setup is because it's a little bit more flexible for the, for the producer, whoever's engineering it, 
And also, it, they give you different flavors. DIs give you a different flavor than a mic, okay? Now, the, for me, the mic, it'll, the mic sound just gives it sort of like a nice round bottom end to the tone, and then the DI is more of like a direct sound. Now, if you've got those two signals, it just gives you a lot more flexibility, and when you mix them, it just sounds, for me, it just sounds great. And that's why I prefer using two, but I've used, you know, I've used just DI a ton of times, so don't worry about it. If you don't want to do this, 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 the full shenanigans, okay, where you're splitting the, splitting the signals. So before we get talking about basses, let me just play you a groove. Let's, I'll, you know, play 20, 30 seconds of a groove. Hopefully, sometimes it's more with me. I like to, uh, you know, like the sound of my own voice, or I do on bass anyway. Um, I'll, I'll play a groove, and to start with, we'll have DI only, then we'll have mic only, and then I'm going to show you the signal mixed together so you can get a real feel of what it sounds like. So let's check it out. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a bit of a flavour of, you know, the different sounds that I'm getting from this setup. Again, you don't have to use a mix like this. It's just in my experience that a lot of producers do like that, you know, a mic mixed with the DI because it gives them a lot of flexibility and, and it just gives a really nice sound when they're mixed together. You don't have to use a BAE DMP. You don't have to use a Van der Klay, obviously. These are just what I'm using. So I recommend, you know, just searching around and see what you can find. There's a lot of different options out there. Um, so hopefully that gave you a good idea of why I do what I do it with this setup. In terms of basses, when I'm working with a producer, I automatically assume they're going to either want a jazz bass sound or a precision bass sound. Okay, this is a P bass, a precision bass, and I've got the jazz bass over there as well. Um, and I automatically assume that because just of my experience, that they're, they're, you know I want to be, I want to give the producer or the songwriter something the sound that they want and and generally they're very they're either really used to a jazz based sound or really used to a p based sound and they know exactly how to mix them as well specifically talking about producers they know exactly how, what to expect with those bases now sometimes they'll want an active jazz and uh, not an active jazz bass an active sound as well which you could get with an active jazz bass but you can get with a whole range of modern bases as well but just my 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 advice to you is if you're going to get into, you know, recording as part of your, you know, part of what, as what you do as a bass player and freelancing, so you're working with different producers and different songwriters, you're going to have to get that P bass sound and that jazz bass sound covered, okay, because some people want one of the, one, either one or the other. And, uh, and then if you have a, you know, an active bass as well that you can get a more modern tone out of, well, that's just top trumps because it gives you all three. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'm just gonna play us out with a bit of a groove. And if you haven't been to scottsbasslessons.com yet, make sure you go over there, check it out. There's a ton of lessons like this. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this lesson. Let me know if you have your experiences with recording. You know, do you use a, th like a setup like this or do you use generally like just DI or just mics? Just let me know, because I'm always reading through the comments. Um, I love interacting with you guys, as you know. I'm always down there commenting myself. And other than that, look out for lesson three coming of this series when I'm going to be getting Warren Hewitt on with us in the lesson. And we're going to be doing it remotely, so who knows what's going to happen. And we're going to be working with a track and I'm going to be discussing, you know, how, how it actually, the workflow of what happens in a remote session. 
so you can see it, you know, in, you know, you can actually see what happens. So other than that, take it easy and I will see you in the shed. Bye. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey hey guys. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.